Oh, uh, that's better, I think. Yeah. All right. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Planning Commission meeting of June 17th, 2024. We are awaiting the arrival of our um, third planning commissioner, Commissioner Daniel Amir. So we have a quorum this morning. So we'll just uh, just wanted to welcome everyone. And for those online, we are here and we'll be with you momentarily. Okay, we are all present and accounted for, and we'll start the meeting. Uh, start with a roll call. Commissioner DeFever? Here. Vice Chair Amir? Here. Chair Williams? Here. Thank you. Uh, okay, so this is an opportunity um, uh, for anyone who wishes to speak to matters that are not on the public agenda, um, or on the agenda, this would be a, the time for anyone to speak. Um, we don't have anyone here with us in in the in the room. Is there anyone online who wishes to speak? There are no hands raised. Excellent. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the staff briefing. If there is one, any updates for the commission? Staff has no updates at this time. Great, and we have no minutes um, to review today either. So we'll go straight to the action item for the day, which is our review annual review of the capital improvement budget. And I, suspect, I, I know I can tell from the screen that there's a presentation. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, and uh, commissioners that are here this evening and members of the public that may join us uh, later on. Uh, we're here this evening to present the, or this morning, I'm sorry, I'm used to evening. <laughs> we're here this morning to uh, present to the uh, commission the uh, capital improvement program that's proposed for fiscal year 24-25. And what we're going to do this morning is review the draft capital plan to con confirm consistency with the goals and policies of the Tiburon General Plan. And this is something that's required by the California Government Code every year. Um, the CIP, what it does is identifies anticipated uh, capital improvements and their funding sources for the next five years. Um, but we typically focus just on the next fiscal year of what we're going to do here in town. And it also uh, provides uh, the fund appropriations that occur manually through the budget uh, adoption process, which will happen at town council. Um, here are some of the goals that are listed in the general plan. Um, all the way from the comprehensive transportation system, uh, all the way down to, you know, overhead utility, utility lines, complete streets. The next one is some open space conservation goals, parks and recreation safety. And what we do is we identify these CIP projects into what goal they uh, fall into. <clears throat> we have three main projects um, this year. Uh, we break the CIP up into uh, streets improvement projects, drainage improvement projects, and also community miscellaneous projects, with just a few exceptions. Majority, if not all of these projects, focus on maintenance, repair, and upgrades to our existing infrastructure. So <clears throat> this is the first project in the on the list. It's the Annual Pavement Maintenance and Rehabilitation Program. Uh, we call this a program because it, it will be in our CIP every year. Uh, we we go through and and find a set of you know a, a segments of streets that need repair, and this is based on MTC. It's it's not what we choose. We go through a program that the that the county uh, provides money for that we have a five year program that we follow. So we just went to town council and we uh, got approved uh, an award to award a project this summer that will start here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, pave about 
12, 13 streets, right around a million dollars. Uh, so that's something that happens every year. Uh, the next project, this is this is new. It's the downtown brick crosswalk rehabilitation project. So we're going to go around and look at all of the brick crosswalks that we have here on Tiburon Boulevard and Main Street. And what we're going to do is we're going to design a few of them with a couple options, either uh, stamped asphalt, that's color colored stamped asphalt, concrete, or actual brick themselves and bring it to town council to see what they prefer. Um, we prefer we prefer uh, the asphalt stamped asphalt because it it's quick. Cars can drive over immediately. Um, we have some uh, places out in uh, southern uh, Sonoma County that we went and looked at. That I mean, they you can't even tell that it's stamped asphalt. Real good job right now. It's stamped asphalt, colored asphalt. So we're going to bring a couple options to town council this year and maybe have a few projects uh, next year with a couple of the intersections repaired. Um, this is a new new project, uh, accessibility evaluation and improvements. So what we're going to do is we're going to hire a consultant to come down and do an analysis of all the town owned and operated facilities and determine what repairs and upgrades are needed to bring them up to current ADA uh, standard, town ADA standards and our town ADA transition plan. One thing that this town is still a little fortunate uh, with is that uh, there's a threshold with employees if you go over 50, you're mandated. You have to. If you're under 50, you just have to show good faith effort in trying to come, you know, uh, adhere to and 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 follow this uh, transition plan, ADA transition plan that's out uh, in the state. The next project here, we are in the middle of design. It's the Main Street uh, seawall repair. Um, we have a lot of deterioration underneath the underneath that uh, bridge. Um, the, uh, there's exposed rebars and, and, and structural flanges that, that need to be repaired and fixed. So we're currently in the design phase. We should have the design completed by the end of uh, this year and go out to construction, not next fiscal year, but the following, because this November we will apply for a grant, uh, that will pay for about 88% uh, of the cost of construction, because we recently added this uh, bridge to the Caltrans registry, which it wasn't in there before. Now that it's on there, it qualifies for free Caltrans money to make these repairs. Uh, annual bike and pedestrian improvements. Uh, this is just something we do every year. We we put in 50000 We request town council authorize 50000 every fiscal year for staff to go out and make repairs to variety area you know different areas in town that need uh, some work and it can be both pedestrian or bicycle related type projects from steps these steps or lanes that we have um uh, around town that that, that we haven't uh, repaired or, or seen lately that need some work so it's kind of our own discretion of where we spend this fifty thousand just areas that that need to be uh, fixed. Uh, the next project is the open space management program. Again, this is a program every year we spend money uh, going out to different areas uh, within town to make rep to uh, basically cut down uh, fuel uh, related uh, invasive species that are out there. Uh, we have a five year implementation plan that we developed a couple years ago that we're following. And um, last year we we had some goats that came out and that. It was fun, but it did. It just didn't work out with with the type of vegetation we have here. Those are mo mostly for grassy areas, and we have a lot of wooded type uh, uh, coyote broom and 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 French broom out there. So we're using mechanical methods now to remove it. It's quicker, faster, and we're actually getting more done for for the amount of money that we're allotted every year. So again, we'll move forward with that uh, mechanical removal. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to look for areas that may be uh, suitable for the goats and we'll continue to work and, and try it again. Uh, the next uh, project we have is a storm drain maintenance and rehabilitation program. Um, this one here, this year, we're working on a design to uh, upgrade a lot of the undersized storm drain pipes that are in the Bel Air area. Um, we, some of those pipes are undersized by almost eight to 10 inches. That's why we're experiencing some flooding in those areas. So we're going to make a lot of improvements out there uh, this uh, fall 
uh, plans should be done here in the next month. We'll go out to bid in July, August, and then start work sometime in August. It's a lot of the work is in the park area and in front of the school. And we're going to try to get in front of the school before school starts. Um, and it's open cut. So we've got all this set up to, um, to really help that area and 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 reduce flooding from the undersized uh, infrastructure that's there. Uh, broadband fiber network infrastructure design. So right now we received last year we received or a year and a half ago we received a LADA grant, hundred almost one hundred eighty thousand dollars, and that LADA grant would help uh, design and and uh, do some environmental studies and the feasibility of installing a conduit from Highway 101 all the way to Main Street. Um, so we are actually in the middle of that right now, the design and the environmental. Uh, we should have the environmental done by March of next year with uh, encroachment permits in hand with a complete design by April. And what we're gonna end up doing is going out to bid with that project next year just to see what kind of prices come in. We anticipate it's gonna be between one and a half to $2 million to do this. Um, in the meantime, we're also looking for grants to see if they'll help pay for this uh, construction project. Uh, we do have a uh, another process or another uh, alt alternative in mind as well that we will uh, team up with Caltrans because they're right now also designing their paving project for Tiburon Boulevard. They anticipate their design project to be completed by December of 2025 and construction sometime in end of 2026. And what they are, what we are planning to do is combine this project with their project as a bid alternate. And if we don't like what we see when we go out to bid on our own, Caltrans will also take it with them and bid it, bid on our behalf. And if we like that price, then we'll end up going with it if funding's available. But that'll just put in conduit and bring in uh, high-speed fiber all the way into town. Uh, next project is the Public Works Corporation Yard Rehabilitation. Um, we've been working on this for a long time. And uh, due to just the economy that we're in and how much prices have gone through the roof, um, to Put in a good working corporation yard out there. We're looking at about $10 million and that won't work. We, we just don't have that, uh, that kind of money to, to rebuild. So we have $120,000 that we're going to uh, go out and get a consultant to see what we can do uh, currently within that footprint to at least bring that building up to current standards, uh, make it uh, uh you know, seismic proof, se put some uh, seismic factors in there that, that you know, that building will probably go down in a large earthquake. And, and this right here is, is first responders are all here. So we're going to come in here and see what we can do. We have about, I believe, a little over $3 million set aside that every year town council puts some money aside to help uh, fund this project. So at this point, we just want to see what, what we can get for about 3 or $4 million, uh, what kind of renovations can happen at this site. Uh, here's some more pictures of, of just, you know, the inside. <clears throat> uh, the next project, this is a new project. It's the old rail uh, trail retaining wall replacement. This one's right here in front of Town Hall. It's where the, uh, the trail splits. We've noticed that the retaining wall along that side there is, is just failing due to its age. So this would be a, just a quick project to get in there and reinforce it and rebuild what we need to do to get so it doesn't fail any, any further than it, than it is right now. Uh, parks master plan. We are currently still in the middle of the parks master plan, but the tail end of it. Uh, we plan, we had a, a good public outreach uh, Friday night on Maine two days ago. Um, we have a couple post commission meetings set up and two more town council meetings, but we plan to, uh, have this project wrapped up in the fall, probably go to town council with, with a final approval here in September or October, but plenty of time for the public to get involved with the additional post commission meetings and, um, town council meetings that we have set. Uh, this is a new project. It's the police department's solar array uh, waterproofing project that we have. And in here, um, several years ago, we we constructed a solar array over the police uh, vehicles. Um, 
this was uh, not done through the town. We didn't pay for it. It's kind of like, you know, they built it um, and then we're just paying them back every month, monthly installments. Um, and then we own it after so many years. But I think that we have to make some payments for the next 10 years before we can do a lump sum and pay it off. But this was at no cost install installation. But the problem is, is that during inclement weather, it really rains hard through there. It's not waterproof. So we have uh, a company that that came in and did some analysis and said that we can waterproof it for under $25,000. So that'll keep the vehicles and the police officers uh, dry during uh, heavy rainstorms through there. So that's, that's a new project uh, for that. Next one is the uh, police department women's locker room remodel. Uh, we're going to, we, we finished the men's side. So now we're going to do the women's locker room again. It's $150,000 and um, they have never been remodeled uh, since they built the uh, department. So what will end up happening is that they're going to replace the lockers, the flooring, the fixtures um, within the facility and make sure that it also uh, follows current ADA uh, guidelines that are in place. Uh, Tiburon Boulevard traffic study. This is a new project that um, uh, we just went to town council to uh, award the project. Uh, Parametrics Engineering, a local firm, will be studying uh, traffic patterns here in, on Tiburon Boulevard and uh, the surroundings. And this is about a one year long project. We just uh, kicked off an initial meeting two weeks ago, and we're working right now to get our panel group together. We currently have a member of post uh, post commissioner on there, and uh, our mayor is on that panel. We have a few more folks that we're looking at to get on the panel as an advisory panel to help with, move this project along. So we should have uh, this project full speed ahead here in the next couple months. Uh, right now, uh, Parametrics is collecting existing data. They're waiting for school to get back into session August and September to verify the existing data that they have to get more counts. But uh, we'll be coming to town council about four times. We're going to have uh, one or two public uh, workshops here at uh, council chambers as well as we move forward with this traffic study. Uh, RBSD pond site restoration. Um, so we currently are the owners of, of, the, of these ponds. Um, we are working with, uh, one of our consultants, uh, EKI, they are, uh, they finalized a closure plan for us at the state accepted. So good news there. Um, all the levels, uh, pollutant levels in those ponds are below what the standards, the, you know, the, the level, the set level that the state requires. So we don't have to do any additional remediation in there just removing the water and a lot of the water is almost gone uh, through there um, we have plans that will be completed here in the next couple weeks uh, we're going to have two sets of plan two sets of plans one will be standard get rid of the fence grade it get it to a final nice sloped uh, uh, site uh, we're going to hydro seed it and just get grass on there that's going to be about two hundred fifty thousand dollars just kind of estimating but we're going to also do a bid alternate to basically remove the water, remove some of the structures that are not necessary anymore, and then just fill the ponds, but keep the fence with the, um, but, but remove the barbed wire. Uh, this way, we'll just wait and see what uh, the parks master plan has in place and what town council wants to do. Uh, we'd hate to spend $250,000 and then a year or two from now, we just destroy that place. So, uh, just filling it up with sand and 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 seeding it and just making it level uh, would be a fraction of that cost. So we'll just see what town council would like to do once we get the bids uh, back. Uh, police department floor replacing replacement. Um, the picture doesn't do it justice. I was actually out there about a, two weeks ago and I did look at the floors. They are pretty bad. Uh, there's probably you know quarter inch gap between all the tiles. It's it's really worn and and it does need replacement. Um, so we've got $30,000 set aside to replace all the flooring at the uh, police department. Uh, town hall facility exterior repairs. 
again, this, this facility is approaching 30 years of age right now. And what we're going to do out there, we're, we're asking for $60,000 to go out there and just do make some improvements around town hall, remove uh, and replace dry rotted uh, siding materials, um, anything that's not functioning correctly uh, in and around the grounds of town hall that are uh, degraded due to weather. So that that's a simple project uh, that we're going to have in place to uh, upgrade town hall. Uh, town hall facility EV charging stations. So right now we've got uh, two charging stations here for our fleet. This project will take these two, move them here, and add a third one for fleet. And where we have this cobblestone through here, that will all be an ADA path of travel, either a raised sidewalk or a flat sidewalk that will connect to the library's path back here. So we're going to have nice new sidewalk through here that'll connect to um, the sidewalk there on Tiburon Boulevard with uh, charging stations here for the fleet. So all the fleet will move out here and we'll have this open for public use, but it'll take, it'll, it'll put in the sidewalk and, and put in some uh, drainage upgrades as well. And I think it'll be a good, uh, nice little project here. We believe we can get it for under a hundred thousand dollars to have all this work done, electrical and concrete. Uh, so we have a lot of contractors that we can, that we work with. But, and again, this, Price of concrete and materials has just skyrocketed these last couple of years. But uh, with a lot of traffic through there and the cobblestones is just dangerous for people, rolled ankles and, and falling down. We just need to put in a nice. And then since we had the front closed during the um, uh, library remodel, a lot of the contractors and, and residents have been used to using the back door. So we want to make sure that that is up to ADA standards through there as well. Um, then we have a second project. Now this is for EV charging stations for the public. And we're working on that one. And those are gonna be placed here where the Chase building is along the back side. So we're gonna have some standard um, plugs and then some fast charging plugs as well. So the, again, we're working on that project. This is again, design and build for under 200,000. We're looking at some grants that, we, that we're gonna receive from PG&E as well for that project. And uh, we're also looking at a few companies that will come in and put in their uh, charging stations with credit card. They'll run the whole thing. We get a certain percentage of, of uh, the fees that, that come in from there. But we're looking at about eight charging stations here uh, for the public to use. Uh, library hall and, and, and town hall and library wayfinding signage. So right here, what we're going to do is there's just been, I've been here almost seven years or six years, but there's a lot of confusion. Some people think this is the library. They go to the library for town hall and it happens all the time. So we want to come out here and, and uh, the same uh, firm that is working on our ADA uh, transition plan will look at basically uh, putting in some nice signage that can direct uh residents and visitors to town hall, to the library, to Zelensky Park, um, you know, Shoreline Park, kind of just some really nice signage out there uh, to basically, you know, uh, alert the public on what facilities, uh, where the facilities are and, and where, where to go, if, you know, the type of uh, information or help they need. And with that, that was the last project. And with that said, uh, what we recommend, what we're recommending from the commission this morning is to adopt a motion, finding the draft CIPs consistent with the goals and policies of the Tiburon general plan. And with that, we're, I'm here for questions and discussion. Thank you so much for that great presentation. Um, are there any questions for staff? Yeah, I can start. Sure. sure. Oh. All right. I, I have a few questions uh, just for clarification. So first of all, um, the broadband project, I mean, I know that's been talked about for a while, just from a big picture perspective. So let's say you do have fiber on Tiburon Boulevard, but you still you still need to co connect the last mile. How do you connect to the to Tiburon Boulevard? You still need Comcast for that, don't you? No, no. So there's there's other providers out there that uh, we can connect to and through uh, totally uh, independent of, of Comcast. So right now, the only thing that we're doing here is we're there's there's uh, we're, we're connecting at a point near the 
on the on the west side of 101 where we do have fiber already there mm -hmm. i don't know who the provider is of that fiber um and then we're gonna dead end it and stop it at main street just enough for um the businesses the library the schools and us and what we're doing is with this project we're bringing junction boxes over into each entrance of the neighborhoods and then we're going to work with potential providers we have some money in our pot for uh, magellan advisors who did our strategic mm -hmm. plan to go out and see uh if we can get some providers that can come in and uh install these fibers or install the conduit and the fiber into the neighborhoods um that's it's it's a long project uh we don't know the feasibility of if a company will come in and do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that uh, we do have AT&T lines in place already. And AT&T is also interested in, in the fiber project. And they want to do something very similar and get fiber to them. So if we can get these junction boxes in into all the neighbor neighborhoods, um, we may partner up with maybe Comcast or AT&T that already have fiber and ground or a third party comes in and leases their conduit and pushes fiber into the neighborhoods. Okay. And then the, there was, um, I guess there was discussion about uh, bicycle and pedestrian improvements. Um, so it was mentioned on the slide that you have the Trestle Glen. Um, I think it's one of the first ones, maybe. Uh, is it that? Yeah, it is that. So it says uh, Trestle Glen Boulevard. <clears throat> there is no bike lane on Trestle Glen Boulevard. So yeah, we have actually a design already, a preliminary design to widen the shoulders of Trestle Glen right. and add in retaining walls and make that connection between Paradise and down to Tiburon Boulevard. It's, been, it's about a million and a half dollar project to do. So we've been applying for grants every year to try to get money for that project. Uh, we've been just unsuccessful. So we're actually going to apply again here this fall for some grant money to make okay. this possible. So the strategy is just to try every year. And every every year we're applying and we're just hoping that, you know, it's it's an off year we don't where we don't have many jurisdictions that are applying or they're in the middle of construction on some other projects. And try to get it but we have we spent uh uh just probably about three years ago we spent a good amount of money getting some really good plans preliminary plans drawn up and we're just submitting every year to uh to the, uh try to get some grant money to get this done okay and on one last question that let the com uh, other commissioners speak is just on the uh on the ada um you said it's uh I guess the study is to check whether town, I guess, uh, town properties are meeting ADA. So, and then there's, I guess, another slide later on talking about the library and the town hall for another 25,000. So, so I guess, what are the properties that we're talking about outside town hall, um, library? What else are we talking about the parks as well? Or what are we talking yeah, about? So we're talking about the library, the police department, um, town hall. Uh, we have the bathroom at South of the Knoll the bathroom at Blackie's Pasture, the bathroom at near Sam's in downtown, mm -hmm. um, the uh, corporation yard as well, even though it doesn't need to, but it's part of it. Um, so those are the buildings and facilities that they're going to uh, look at and provide us with, with basically what, what's needed to uh, accommodate uh, ADA, current ADA standards. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner DeFever. So I do also have a question about the broadband fiber network. Um, I see, you know, as, as we know, as the planning commission, our job is to see that everything is consistent with the general plan. Um, it says that the broadband fiber network uh, is falls under circulation A, which is comprehensive transportation system. And I tried to pull it up here on my little screen to see if I can find exactly where it might fall under. But if you could provide me more context to that, that, that would be helpful. Oh, absolutely. So right now our, our signalized intersections are not communicating with each other. They're on an old system, which um, every cabinet has an internal clock and what, and I've, and I've designed a lot of these at another municipalities. What it is, is 
these clocks drift. So we have timing plans. Usually it's AM, PM peak, uh, then PM, and then after 10 o'clock, they go into a different plan, meaning who they give priority to as far as vehicles when they travel through the intersection. So with these plans in place, if the clocks are synchronized, they work beautifully. So every one of these cabinets has an internal clock. And if the clock drifts by one or two seconds, the plans don't work. So that's why when you're, you have a green light and you're getting to the next intersection and it turns red on you and you're like, well, there's no cars on the side road. Why am I getting a red light? Well, these clocks have drifted and um, they're not synchronized anymore. So Caltrans has to come in and they should come in on their routine maintenance, which is once a month. Or, or more often, but usually we call them and say that something's not sinking here. Can you come check the clocks? Well, what this project will do is we're also taking fiber to every one of the intersections. And with fiber, uh, we can now upgrade these intersections into more intelligent intersections, meaning that uh, we, there's technology out there that can actually uh, look at AI technology that can look at vehicles traveling and provide instant modifications to the intersections, which will speed up traffic and, and not get you stuck. And, and also the technology will look at vehicles they have out there right now that are traveling a little too fast and, and they, they want to avoid an inter, a collision at the intersection. They'll extend the green light for that vehicle that's traveling a little too fast to go through the intersection safely and then go through their cycle of, of amber and then red. So this is something that uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, mainly, I know it's going to provide high-speed internet to the, the facilities, but our main thing here is to get these signalized intersections to sync up with each other. And it'll also provide um, real-time uh, monitoring by Caltrans where they can make adjustments at their command center to the intersections. But once we upgrade to these intelligent uh, detections that are out there, um, they'll just do the work. It's, it's all artificial intelligence and, and it's just a lot out there, but you need fiber for it. Well, maybe our general plan needs another update <laughs> to uh, make sure we... <laughs> I'm teasing Dina because we just went through that. <laughs> But maybe we need a category for, for such things. But I, thank you. I really appreciate that. That sounds like a really great improvement. Uh, I wouldn't advertise that if you drive fast, it'll stay green for you, however. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, we, we, right. not forever. We need just some PD out there to uh, monitor. But um, it, it has, it's proven that it's it has uh, reduced collisions in a lot of areas where um, you know, they're, they're, when I worked at another municipality, we had a lot of collisions at this one intersections and we went with and we had fiber out there and we went with this new technology. And this was probably about 10 years ago. And even 10 years ago, it actually uh, saved. I mean, our collision rates at that intersection dropped by almost 40 percent by just extending that green for some of those vehicles that were in a hurry, just wouldn't stop in time. Um, but it, it's great technology. And I think syncing all these signals together will move traffic much more quickly the clocks won't drift um every intersection will be will be synced with each other and independently as well yeah i mean the reality is if they're going that fast they're going to run a yellow or an orange or or the reds and that's a high rate of traffic accidents come from that so yeah um my only other comment was to commend uh, commend you for remaining uh, steadfast on the corporation yard because we've seen that so many times here on the Planning Commission. And I always think, oh, I hope they do something, even if it's some small step. I know they're setting aside money, but the corporation yard really needs some attention. So uh, I'm happy to hear it's going to get some attention, even if a smaller portion of the project very soon. That's really nice to hear. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I just have one question clarification for me, um, not directly relevant so much to the to your um, improvement program on the re, uh, San, I'm sorry, the Richardson Bay sanitation ponds. Um, you had indicated you had the uh, sort of there's the you know putting down grass or an alternate bid for sand. Um, if there's some period of waiting to determine what, what should happen out there under the master plan, will that be, become more clear as of the fall of this year when the master plan is, is sort of uh, completed and approved, or will there still be ongoing work 
vis-a-vis uh, -vis the sanitation ponds to further develop what's best for that area? No, I well, the direction that, that town council wanted us to take with the parks master plan, we had some really nice um, set drawings of what the public wanted based on surveys. But town council asked us to be a little bit more kind of open-ended to allow different amenities in different areas and go with more of a zoning plan and take lineal park and divide it into two or three different, three or four actually different zones. And based on those zones, have a decision tree of what can and cannot go into any in those different zones. So we had, uh, I believe in one of the drawings when we went to town council back in March, um, drawing that was actually the most popular was, you know, we had like a teen hangout, maybe an amphitheater. Um, it was like a tennis ball, pickleball court. Um, uh, I think there was a small little, uh, like a rec, small little building, rec building that would store soccer and lacrosse stuff that the rec center could use. So it was kind of more of a, a multi-age type of design, but um, we now have a new plan in place to where it, it shows um, that area and what amenities can fit in that area based on the, on the zone that it's in. So we can have maybe, a, you know, a dozen different mm -hmm. types of amenities that can fit in right. there. And, it, it'll just then be up to the town council, you know, as projects move forward. But with as far as filling those ponds up with sand, um, in both of the uh, uh, alternatives that we have, uh, both of them will be actually seeded. It'll just be flat with, with seed on there. But one will look, the cheaper version will look exactly the way it is right now, just flat grassy land with, you know, mm -hmm. the, the fence around it still. So it won't be accessible. Right. Uh, where the 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 first option, the base bid would be gently sloping and just opening it up as being as right. part of right, right. So the the sand option might incentivize yeah. council members and <laughs> community members to <laughs> develop a plan for that. That may be yeah. Once we have our plan set and adopted in September, you know, for next fiscal year's CIP, that may be the first project that. Right, <laughs> right. But just a question on that. Why, why do you need to do anything actually after you take out the water? Why can't you just leave? It, it's because it's fenced and you can't use it. I mean, why do you need to fill it at all and spend any money? Um, we want to fill it so that uh, it immediately becomes flat and usable. If we leave it the way it is, our fear is that we may end up, it, it may end up becoming a wetland. And now we purchased a piece of land that we can't use and it has to stay the way it is. Uh -huh. Interesting. due to migratory birds being so close to the bay and, and the moisture and we just at this point it's not so we want to get in there immediately at minimum just fill it up and get it get it done hmm. interesting well uh, clearly a lot of hard work and thought goes into putting this together um it was really helpful to get that additional context um in response to all of the questions uh i just you know i don't have any further comment questions do you yeah i have one yeah. more on, on the traffic study um that's that's been done in the past to my knowledge i mean there's been we're, we've been looking into that for a while i mean is and that i think it's come up here and every year almost on general plan what what's new right now i mean that's not an insignificant amount of money spending on that i mean the the landscape is what it is there's one lane i mean uh, just just the thoughts around that so with with uh, the traffic study right now, um, we are looking at you know some geometric, perhaps some geometric reconfigurations along Tiburon Boulevard. Um, one being there at the intersection of Trestle Glen. Um, one possible, uh, and this was when we interviewed all three consultants. All three of them came up with a roundabout type design there, uh, where we do have the right of way. Caltrans does have the right of way, um, so a roundabout design extending the two lanes towards the black east side so you have two lanes as you enter through the intersection outbound um we have that we have some sidewalk improvements that they're going to look at possible sidewalk from gil martin to san rafael that our consultants going to look at um they're going to look at possible we've been uh, a lot of uh signalized intersections and crosswalks lighted crosswalks have been suggested to us and putting those in again you know there there is the yes it'll be safe where vehicles would stop but now does it add additional time traffic delay because the vehicles are stopped so they're going to look at all of that as well 
They're going to look outside the box with some type of ride sharing program, different ride sharing programs, park and ride into town. Uh, I remember council suggested some type of trolley system that we can put in place from Blackies into downtown that'll go back and forth. So they're going to analyze pretty much everything. We're going to work closely also with the three schools, um, drop off pickup times, how they work. Sometimes if you can stagger those a little bit, which will help. Um, they're going to also look at, again, the infrastructure, the signals. And in the meantime, there are there there's technology out there that can still work with this old system that Caltrans has out there, the loops, detector loops that we have in the uh, asphalt um, that can help synchronize the signals a little better. But um, this is an overall assessment. And you're right, we had Kim Lee Horn did a similar one 20, 30 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, I think in 2020. <laughs> I don't think it was 20 years ago, but I, for some reason, I, I feel like the topic has popped up occasionally. Right? <laughs> we keep talking about it, but yeah. they actually haven't done a formal study. Oh, they haven't you, done okay. more than 10 years. 10 years. Uh, comes up to me a lot. Yeah. I remember seeing uh, in, 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 uh, one of the uh, our old uh, planning folders, previous directors um, of work with with uh, Kim Lee Horn on on Tiburon Boulevard, and I think the maybe 2010 was the last one that I remember seeing. So oh, it's about 20, 14, 14 years. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. 14 years on that one, but nothing, no fruition. You know, nothing came out of it. it was just had some general ideas of what we can do, and again, it was uh, expanding the lanes outbound onto Brown Boulevard near Trussell Glen. So this one uh, with parametrics, uh, we're very confident since they have a, a very good team uh, involved with this project. They work with TAM on a lot of the projects along the 101 corridor and have a very good relationship with Caltrans. We believe that since Caltrans right now is in their design phase, of this project that the repaving project and the bike lanes and that's another thing they're going to analyze the bike lanes that caltrans is suggesting from 101 all the way to trussell glen as well um that if they can come up with some uh geometric upgrades to tiburon boulevard that would help alleviate the traffic that we have there and make it run smoothly through the uh, intersections that they're pretty confident that they can push this and have these improvements done on their penny since they're still in the design phase, if they can show that it is a, a safety factor, a health and safety mm. issue. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with parametrics through a project um, that I'm working on with the county that they're working on and they're uh, been impressed with their work. Yeah. Uh, and traffic does continue to be a problem. So <laughs> it makes sense to study it and uh, to have a more focused, what sounds like a really more focused. More focused. As well. yeah. Yes, they, they yeah, worked on the design. They did the design there on Sir Francis Drake Boulevard and in Greenbrae, Kentfield area. And uh, I've noticed that traffic is a lot more flowing, a lot more smoother, not many delays after their, their study. And they, they've done a lot of studies. I know the San Anselmo traffic uh, uh, congestion project re reduction that they're working on as well. So they, they've had a lot of uh, experience in this. So we're just can't wait to see what kind of out of the box suggestions they, they bring to us. Any other questions? Well, I think, um, you know, I, I just wanted to echo uh, Commissioner DeFever's sentiments about first just commend you for the work and putting this together, putting together these, the program and the, and uh, um, every year. <laughs> um, and also uh, for keeping the um, public works, uh, the corporation yard in the mix, because what, one thing that's so nice to see is that, you know, this is improving the town for all of the residents and the users, but also for the staff and the people who work and and to improve the circumstances of the people who work to keep the town beautiful is very important, I think, to, certainly to me um, and to us on the commission. Um, and also, I was really, very, um, really, it's incredible how much time you're spending, um, you put into grant applications and setting projects up to receive grant pro pro uh, funding and to make them eligible for funding. I know a lot of work goes into that that we don't see. So I just wanted to really acknowledge that. And so much money, I mean, you one, one uh, uh, um, the Main Street Seawall, you said could potentially be 88% funded by grant funding. So that's really impressive. And, you know, we're grateful, I'm just grateful to you for that. Um, I I would be prepared to make a motion um, to adopt the resolution um, finding the capital improvement program is consistent with the general plan. If there's a second, I'll second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes, um, and the meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.